Hi there. This week I'm meeting with a solar power company. Solar prices have come down so much that paying for a solar installation with monthly payments is less than my current monthly power bill. And it makes my power source way more sustainable. You see, mining companies are going through a similar thought process for their mines. They're assessing energy sources and they're changing processes to lower costs and lower their emissions. Their commitments to cost targets and net zero emissions targets are a bit more involved than what's happening at my acreage. In this video, I'll break down what's involved from renewable power sources and distribution to autonomous vehicles and hydrogen furnaces. I'm Roland Plett. Let's get started. Before we talk solutions, let's try to define the problem a little bit. First of all, the title of this video frames this as an emissions problem. And although that's important, there are a few other factors to keep in mind. Secondly, the energy transition needs to be financially viable, or it's just not going to work economically. Third, often there are economic drivers for this energy transition that provide strong support for reducing the emissions component. Let's start by talking about renewables as the primary energy source. This is a big part of the emissions equation. Wind and solar have dropped in cost to the point that they're among the least cost energy sources in the world. The International Renewable Energy Agency, or IRENA, in their 2021 report shows solar and wind as less costly than fossil fuel generation and very comparable to other renewable sources. The scales are even tipping toward renewables when storage is factored in as an additional cost for the variable renewable sources. Because of this, there's a lot of focus on wind and solar when mines look to alternative and local electric energy sources. Okay, now we have a good idea of what the source of the net zero energy needs to be. If you're getting value out of this video, by the way, just clickety click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, let's look at the other end of the energy rainbow where the energy is being consumed. And then we'll look at how to connect the source with the consumer. Okay? There's a variety of energy intensive activities in the mine. And here are a few, and some might actually surprise you. So what is the biggest energy consumer in the mine? What do you think? That prize actually goes to the crushers and mills that break the ore down into dust for refining. Even if all the vehicles in the mine were converted to electric, in most mines, the crushers and mills would still be the biggest consumers. These machines mostly use electric motors today, so there's not really a lot of conversion that's needed. They just need to be plugged into a sustainable energy source. The second biggest consumer of energy is the vehicles. Almost all the vehicles today run on gasoline or diesel. And this is one of the biggest conversion points when we start eliminating emissions. In general, there's two scenarios for vehicle conversion. The light duty vehicles will likely become battery electric vehicles. This is very similar to what's happening in the city commuter car market with charge stations and defined operating ranges between charges. When we get into the heavy duty vehicles, like dozers and haul trucks, there's a lot more discussion about whether most of these will go battery electric or fuel cell electric instead. Fuel cell vehicles use hydrogen to generate the electricity rather than pulling the electricity from batteries. If a mine decides to use fuel cell vehicles, then they'll need a hydrogen infrastructure as well. And in that case, the hydrogen may be produced on site from renewable electricity, or it may be transported in from somewhere else. There's one more big consumer of energy that I wanna mention before we talk about how to connect all this together. And that's the refinery or smelter. The previous energy consumers were generating movement. In a refinery or smelter though, we're creating an insane amount of heat to transform dust and pellets and slurry into a pure substance like gold, 
copper, or steel. Now there's usually three different net zero options for this type of a furnace based on what's needed in the process. They are bio oil combustion, hydrogen combustion, or an arc furnace. The refinery or smelter may not be located near the mine, but it's definitely part of the mining value chain. Now I could go through all the other smaller energy consumers like lights, pumps, conveyors, but almost all of them are already electric and they don't need conversion. They just need to be plugged into a renewable power source. So now I want to answer a question that you may not have considered. You see, connecting all of these energy consumers to the, their energy source, it's actually not that trivial. And it has a whole system of its own, made up of substations and high voltage distribution lines. It's almost like the mine needs its own power utility on site. Now this is not completely new for mines, but as electricity becomes a way more important part of the mine, the power utility aspect becomes a way more important piece as well. Okay, we just covered off connecting power sources with power consumers. There's another connection type in the mine that's becoming critical for mines to operate efficiently. Every machine and monitoring instrument is generating a ton of information or data about what's going on around it and how it's performing. Companies like Cisco Systems and others have validated networks that provide pathways for this data to come together and provide incredible operational insights. Often the energy transition project is a great time to build out this amazing data resource as well. In summary, the energy transition is required to reach net zero emissions. And as it turns out, renewable energy is often a lower cost option for generating power than what's being used today. And finally, this transition provides an opportunity to build out a modern data network to ensure that the operation is running at its peak. Please check out the video description for where to find details on Cisco's mine strategy. Please join the Cisco mining community and look for more videos that go into additional detail on individual energy transition components. I'll keep you posted <laughs> as well on how the net zero journey is going at my acreage. Take care.